Hey guys, how's it going? In this guide, we're going to take a look at the import-export system in the Docklands DLC. The import-export system is one of the most complex and intricate systems they have ever added into Anno, and so it can be a little confusing at first to understand. So let's take a look at a brand new dock wharf that I just built and just plopped down a few depots on just to make it look nice. When you first build the uh, Docklands Wharf, you're going to have a very limited selection of goods that you can import. It doesn't matter if you build the Docklands Wharf at 250 artisans when it first unlocks in a brand new game, or if you build it in a city with a million investors, what you can import is extremely limited at first. You're going to be limited to four things from the farms, three from Fetal, and two from Shentus. To unlock more goods, you need to meet their unlock conditions. Something like Red Peppers requires 180 goods exported of anything, in order to unlock malt, you need to import 171 hops. To get those hops, you need five export-import contracts. To get more contracts, that's pretty simple. All you do is go over here to your wharf, click on modules, and build yourself an exports office, and that gives you more contracts. Pretty simple system. As you expand and grow your city, uh, build up to new tiers, you will, un you will open up more opportunities for imports over here. The Old World and Cape Trelawney has the most robust amount of imports available to you. You can import every single basic good, uh, basic consumer good, everything from fish up to steam carriages. Construction materials, you can only import... Uh, timber from this. You cannot import weapons or anything else. You can only import timber from the construction materials. Raw materials, you uh, you cannot import saltpeter, but you can import everything else, even that annoying gold. But you cannot import saltpeter. And agricultural items, intermediate products, there are a limited selection of goods from both of these uh, sections right here you can import. The New World has a very limited selection of goods available for import, and the same goes for DLC regions if you have the Passage or uh, Land of Lions. There are a select few goods from those regions you can import as well. Scholars also have a variety of things you can import for them. And they all have their own unlock conditions, so you just hover over them, see what you need to do. Steam carriages, for instance, have a massive requirement of 31 contracts needed to unlock importing steam carriages. So just be aware of their unlock conditions. The other thing to talk about real quick is the colors. Uh, white goods are considered basic goods. They have a exchange ratio of 1.0. There's nothing special about them. Hops for instance, have a exporter level uncommon. Their exchange ratio is 1.2. They are harder to import. It takes more goods exported to import those. The same goes for malt. It is a rare level export. It has an exchange ratio of 1.4 above normal. Champagne is an epic, and it has a 1.6 ratio. So it is even more expensive to import. So just be aware of that. Some of these goods, depending on their rarity do require more goods exported to import them than it normally, uh, normally might. In the middle, we've already kind of established this is our active contracts. This is island specific. You can have you can have multiple contracts on a single island. It is only limited by the number of export offices you have built. Over here is our warehouse. Again, island specific. Whatever you have in the warehouse on that particular island is available for export. You can export anything you want. It is up to you. There is no limitation on that. And then right here is our specialty exports. This is a global pyramid. It doesn't matter if you're trading all five goods on one island and five goods on the other. Eventually, they will show up over here in the pyramid as you level them up. So this is a global system right here where you can decide what you want to trade or it or export rather for a better exchange ratio. You can upgrade items to tier four first. It gets a ratio of 1.2 as well as unlocking modules for the harper uh, for the wharf. Every time you put something in a brand new slot, you unlock modules. It can then go up to rare, which gets a 1.4 ratio as well as more modules. Rank 2 is the 1.6, and then finally Legendary, with a double exchange ratio uh, from the base amount. You can only ever have one Legendary 
item at a time being traded across all of your islands. You can have a Docklands Wharf on every single island, but you can only ever have one legendary at a time being traded across the, across your regions. So how do you actually trade? It's pretty simple. We stock. Well, we decide what we want to export. Let's say I want to export fish, and then I decide what I want to import. There is a little bit of a limitation that once you are exporting something, you cannot also import it. It's called a goods redundancy. So you can't sit there and try to flip something around on the same island. You can flip stuff around on different islands. So I could import fish again on a second island, but I can't do it on the same island. So let's say I want to import schnapps right here. As you can see, it has a ratio of 2 to 1. And it's not exactly 2 to 1 because it has a ratio of actually 1.72 to 1. So it's, this right here shows 2 to 1, but this right here, if you hover over the icon, shows you the exact ratio. So fish, I could export 50 fish and bring in 29 schnapps. The better the good, the higher tier the good, the more complex the good, the better it's going to trade for. So something like gold does have a reasonable exchange rate, like gold bars, but that's only for something like schnapps. If I put in maybe like soap, it's going to actually go down to one to four because soap is a more complex chain than gold is. So the exchange ratio is not as is a little bit lower. It's still a good exchange ratio because gold is higher tier than soap, though, but it's not awesome. Things like gramophones, steam carriages, and advanced weapons have some of the best exchange ratios. I could change off, let's say, just one of these for 38 soap. So you can see right there, the better the good, the higher tier the good, the more complex the good, the better the exchange ratio is going to be for you. So that's kind of the basics of this system right here. Let's go ahead a little bit and take a look at a more advanced Docklands setup and actually look at things like how do you determine how much you import. All right, so here we have a far more built up Docklands area. Quite expansive, lots of modules, lots of export offices. We have 12 contracts available to us. So let's take a look at this screen and see what's going on. As you can see, I've unlocked quite a few more goods over here available to us in this spot. And we have our pyramid over here that has several things in it. I am actually trading champagne, steel, and steam motors here on Crown Falls. However, the sewing machines, windows, and grain are not being traded on Crown Falls. They're on another island, but they still show up in this pyramid. This is just like what I was saying earlier, how the this night here is global. And as you rank stuff up, it does show up in other areas. My champagne is my legendary export. I am overproducing champagne in order to import quite a few goods that I don't want to produce myself. Steel is actually a legendary export, but I have it on tier two. So it's not getting the double exchange ratio, even though it's a legendary export, because it's not in that slot. It's only getting a 1.6. I had upgraded this to Legendary before, but I dropped it down because Champagne for me was more valuable. You can move stuff around on this pyramid anywhere you want. If I wanted to move Steel down here, I could and just drop it down to a 1.2 or I could just get rid of it completely and it just becomes a bog standard thing and I have freed up plenty of slots right here. So how you do it is completely up to you. You can do this however you want. It does not matter. The pyramid is your baby, your tool. You play with it however you want. You can move stuff around to different slots. Just be aware you're not going to unlock the modules unless it is a brand new item in a slot that has not been used before. Okay. So let's go here into the big part of it, and that is how do you determine what to import? Uh, for me, it's pretty simple how I determine. Let's take a look at brass. You can see I am importing 340 brass. How do I determine that? Well, we go under statistics and then we're gonna go under the production screen and look at intermediate products and we're gonna look at brass. As you can see, I have a demand of 12 tons per minute of brass. That is what the demand bar is telling you, that you have a demand of 12 tons per minute. I take that 12 tons and then I multiply that times 30. What's 30? 30 is a combination of two things. One is the 20 minute timer. Captain Tobias comes around to your island every 20 minutes. 
every island has its own 20 minute timer okay uh if you have five docklands wharves you're gonna have five tobiases coming in at different points whenever their 20 minute timer is up so i take that 20 minutes and i add 10 minutes on top of it why do i add 10 minutes well simple uh travel time and load and unload times i need time for tobias to get from the edge of the map to my wharf do the transaction and then leave the region so the countdown starts over again so i give myself a buffer of 10 minutes so plus 30 is an easy number to multiply things by so why not so i do 300 and i do 12 times 30 that's 340 that's how much i am importing that if you did it by 20 minutes then eventually you're gonna going to run out because he has to come from the edge of the map to your wharf unload stuff and leave so if you only did 20 minutes you will run out of goods eventually so i give myself that little bit of a buffer it's no different from overproducing a little bit because eventually your warehouse will fill up with brass and then he's only going to trade as much as it takes to fill in whatever has been uh, used up between his last trips. So he might only drop off, I don't know, 150 brass. And he will pick up as much steel as is equivalent to that much brass that he drops off. So it is a smart system where it's not going to try to trade at the full amount if your warehouse is full. So that's how I figure that out. So flipping to this side over here, the steel, I need to be able to supply 277 steel in order to meet that demand. So again, we're going to go into production. We're going to look at our intermediate products. We're going to look at steel. Now, I am actually bringing in extra steel from a few other islands. We take a look at it right here. I need 9.23 steel per minute over production or 10. I like to just go ahead and round up for to be safe and say 10. We can see that I have an overproduction of 12 per minute. So I am producing enough steel to meet the demand of this trade right of this uh this import export contract right here. So I'm good. This right here is going to work just fine. I'll have enough steel to send off and I'm going to bring in the brass I need. The same method has been used for everything you see on this screen. A couple things maybe to interesting to note is uh, look at our bread and chocolate. I'm only importing 20 and 50. The reason I'm bringing in so little is because I'm supplementing. I'm actually producing most of my bread, but I was underproducing just a little bit. I didn't feel like building another bakery and grain farm chain. So instead, I just imported a little bit of bread to meet the rest of my demand. I actually didn't calculate this. I just said, you know what? I think I need maybe like 10 or 20. Let me just go ahead and do 50. Let me just throw that number in there. It's a quick, easy number. As the bread fills up, he'll only trade what is required to fill that contract, and I'm done. The same with chocolate. I just needed a little bit more chocolate, so I just tossed in a quick number, and that fix and he'll trade up till when it's full and then he'll only trade what's required i'm doing the same thing for everything right here champagne right there champagne is my main export i'm using for the most of my stuff um, i need 340 champagne to meet this export that's about 11.3 or 12. if we go down here to crown falls and we look at our champagne i have an overproduction of well it says minus two and that's because the, if champagne is full right now but it is 15 18 minus 3 is 15 so i have an overproduction that meets that demand because i need 12. so this is how the system works it's very very simple actually once you kind of get in and understand your numbers this is going to help a lot of people really buckle down on their productions and understand what these numbers are telling them so i really really like that about this system uh, one one other interesting thing just to kind of take a look at real quick is glass I'm importing 570 glass if we go look at our statistics screen for glass I'm actually producing roughly half of what I need I need to bring in an additional 19 per minute 19 times 30 is 570 because I am producing some glass so I needed to meet the rest of the demand. So I take my 17 that I'm producing, subtract that out of the 36 that I need, that gives me the 19 that I need to make up the rest of it, multiply that times 30. So this is a diff these are the different ways you can use the system. Completely replace chains like I have done with coffee and sausages 
or brass, I'm not producing any of that stuff myself. I'm importing every single bit of it. Or you can use it to supplement, like I'm doing glass or bread or chocolate. So there's a different ways you can do it, and that's my method for it. There's other methods I'm sure that are that have come out or will be coming out uh, for calculating these things, and I encourage you to research, look around, see what you think is going to be your, the best solution for you. This is just how I do it. I don't like to get too technical and too uh, too mathematical with it all. I just want something very simple, and this is simple for me. Guys, I hope this helped a little bit, helped explain some of the system and how it works and what you can do with it. If it did help, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Would love to hear from you. Would love to hear your feedback on the system, what you think of it, what you are using to calculate your imports and exports. And uh, be sure to also join our Discord. Let's have a chat about it over there. I love the Dockland stuff. I love this import-export thing. I want to talk about it all day long. And let's do that. So with that, I guess I will see you guys in another video. Until then, take care.